Hey everyone, I'm Kevin and I lead product at OpenAI. Today we're here to talk developers and agents. And in particular, we're excited to launch a bunch of new tools that make it easy for developers to build reliable and useful agents. Okay, so imagine uh, a world, right, where you know you want to make your request and boom, it's done. Yeah. Like the, the software just knows what you need and it just takes care of it, no questions asked. Like, uh, it's almost like having a personal assistant, you know? Right, in your computer. Right, right. I and mean, it sounds pretty futuristic, but... It does, it really does. OpenAI is saying that um, this might actually be closer than we think. Yeah, with this recent announcement of theirs, it's getting a lot of people talking, that's for sure. Yeah, these tools for building what they're calling AI agents. AI agents, yeah. And, I mean, we've seen companies try to do this before, haven't we? We have, yeah. You remember that, uh, that Chinese startup butterfly effect <laughs> yeah yeah they had that manis platform and um you know had a lot of potential yeah it seemed like a great idea at the time right but it just, it didn't really deliver on all it, it promised yeah it kind of fizzled out exactly so it's different this time well this time open ai is um kind of taking a different uh, approach you know mm -hmm. instead of trying to build like these complete uh, fully formed agents, right. they're giving developers the building blocks, the components okay. to make their own agents. So it's more like a toolkit. Exactly, like a high-tech toolkit. Instead of like a finished product. Exactly, yeah. I like that analogy. Um, so one of the big things they're focusing on with these tools is search. Right. So thinking about it, for an AI to really be autonomous and do all these things on its own, Yeah it has to be able to find the information it needs, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's gotta be able to go out and find what it needs. So how uh, how are they making sure these agents can actually do that? So they've developed uh, these new AI models. Uh, they're called GPT-40 Search and GPT-40 Mini Search. Okay. And they're specifically designed for searching, so they can basically browse the web just like you know you and I would. Like how chat GPT has that search function exactly, now. Exactly, exactly like that. So th these agents can go out, find the info, come back, and use it. Exactly. They can sift through all that information. That's huge. It is huge. And they're claiming that these models are very accurate. Uh, you can see that GBD40 hits a high score of uh, state of the art score of 90%. So, that so can you can you talk about that a little bit? Like, are they as good as they say? So OpenAI, they have this benchmark called Simple QA. Okay. And it tests how well an AI can answer, like, you know, basic factual questions. Mm -hmm. And GPT-40 search, it has a 90% accuracy rate on this benchmark. Wow. Which is really impressive. Yeah. And even GPT-40 mini search, which is a smaller version, okay. it scores 88%. That's incredible, especially when you compare that to oh, the 63% right. for GPT-4.5, which is the more general model. Right, the one that's not specifically designed for searching. Right, so it seems like giving it that ability to actually search the web yeah. is a real game changer. It does seem to have made a big difference. But you did say 90 and 88%, so, I mean, there's still a chance. Right, there's still a chance for error. They're not perfect. They're not perfect. So while we are closer to that vision of these super capable agents, yeah. we're not quite there yet. Not quite there yet. And there are probably other challenges too, besides just, you know, getting everything right every time. Right. There are definitely other things to consider. So what are some of those? Well, for example, um, short navigational queries, right. like, you know, what's the Lakers score today? Those are still tricky for these agents. Okay. And then there's also been um, some issues with citations, even within chat GPT. Right. So there's still work to be done. Yeah. And this response is API that we're talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. It sounds like there's more to it than just these search models, right? That's right. There are other tools in this kit. So what else are they including in there? Well, one interesting tool is um, a file search utility. To be able to create a really good application for this personal stylist, we want to be able to bring in fresh data from around the web um, so that we have both the newest information and also stuff that's really relevant to your users. So in order to demonstrate that, I'll add the web search tool. Cool. The web search tool is really great because you can also add locate, you can also add data about like where your user is. So let's try with somebody else. Kevin, are you happy to be taking any trips anytime soon? Let's say Tokyo. Okay, cool. Tokyo. So I'll put in Tokyo here. And we'll swap in Kevin. And the responses API is really cool because it can do multiple things at once. It can call a file search tool, it can call the web search tool, and it can give you a final answer just in one API response. So in order to tell it exactly what we want, let's give it some instructions. 
And it'd be good if I knew how to code well. <laughs> Great. You say so, you're an engineer here. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> in training. <laughs> so uh, what we want, the, what we want the model to do is when it's asked to recommend products, we want it to use the file search tool to understand what Kevin likes, and then use the web search tool to find a store near him where he can buy something that he might be interested in. So let's go back and say, uh, find me a jacket um, that I would like nearby. And what the model will do is it will uh, issue a file search tool call to understand what kinds of things Kevin likes to wear. And then it will issue a web search tool call to then go and find uh, stuff that Kevin would like based on where he is. So the model was able to, uh, just in the scope of one API call, find a bunch of Patagonia stores <laughs> in Tokyo. Just for you, Kevin. Which, which go, it actually corresponds to Kevin's preferences. He's been wearing a lot of Patagonia around the office. <laughs> Okay. So this lets agents search through a company's internal databases. Oh, wow. Which is really powerful. So it's not just public information. No, it can access private data as well. Right, but that raises some privacy concerns, doesn't it? It does, but OpenAI is aware of that, and they emphasize that none of this data is used to train their models. Okay, so they're not taking that data and using it to make their AI smarter. Exactly. They're keeping it separate. That makes sense. It does. It's a good move because I think companies would be very hesitant to use this technology if they thought their data was being used that way. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, they've also got this thing called the computer using agent model. Okay, what is that? Or CUA for short. CUA, okay. And this is the technology that powers their operator tool. Operator, okay, I think I've heard of that. You might have, yeah. Isn't that the thing that can like actually control your computer, like go on websites and stuff? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it can navigate websites, fill out forms, all sorts of things. That sounds really powerful. Let's demonstrate the computer use tool. So we'll go ahead and add this. We're using the computer use preview model and the computer use preview tool. And we will ask, um, help me find my friend, Kevin, a new Patagonia jacket. What's your favorite color, Kevin? Uh, let's go with black. Black. <laughs> Can't have too many black Patagonia jackets. <laughs> <laughs> and what the model will do is it will ask us for a screenshot. And we have a Docker container running locally on this computer. And we will go ahead and send that screenshot to the model. It will look at the state of the computer and issue another action. Click, drag, move, type. And then we will execute that action, take another screenshot, send it back to the model, and then it will continue in this fashion until it feels that it's completed the task, and then return a final answer. So while well, this is kind of going and doing its thing, we'll hand it back to Nikunj. It is powerful, yeah. So how does it actually work? So basically, the COA model generates mouse and keyboard actions. Oh, wow. So it's like, it's like a virtual user sitting at your computer. Oh, I see. So it can do things like data entry or specific workflows within applications. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So theoretically, you could have an agent that not only finds information on the web, but also acts on that information. Right. It can actually do things with that information. In your digital environment. Exactly. Wow. And for businesses that are really concerned about security, OpenAI offers the option to run the CUA model locally. Wow. Oh. So instead of running in the cloud, it runs on their own systems. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So that gives them more control over their data. That's smart. It is. It addresses a lot of those concerns about you know, data security and potentially leaking sensitive information. Yeah, they're really thinking about all the angles here. They are, but they are also very upfront about the fact that the CUA model is still, you know, under development. Okay. They acknowledge that it's not entirely reliable for complex tasks. Okay. It can still make mistakes. So we're not in a world where we can just let these things run wild and trust them to do everything perfectly. No, not yet, but it's definitely a step in that direction. It is. It's exciting, but also, I mean, there's a lot to figure out still. It's a bit like the Wild West out there, yeah. It really is, like the Wild West of AI agents. Exactly. A lot of potential, but also a lot of unknowns. Absolutely. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff. Um, it is. So I'm really curious to see where all this goes. Me too, me too. But we're going to have to um, yeah. take a quick break, and we'll come back and talk more about the implications of all this.